We all know that technology is changing our world, but what does it mean for humanity? Hello, my name is Anthony and this is Future Thought, the future of humanity. In this series, I'm going to try and predict what our future will look like, how we as a species will change, what will remain the same, and figure out where technology is taking us and how that can affect our future society and culture. Today's episode, Transhumanism. What is transhumanism? Transhumanism in general can be defined as the belief that technology will allow humans to become more than human. There are several different branches of transhumanism that vary in the degree of radicality and focus. One branch, for example, believes that technology can be used to augment our senses, so we can see infrared or ultraviolet light, or have a sense of touch in the microwave spectrum. These super senses could be implemented into our bodies by means of surgery, nanobots, or other technological means. Another branch is focused on life extension. Through genetic engineering and regenerative medicine, we may find a way to allow humans to live for hundreds of years, or even indefinitely. Yet another branch believes that advanced computers may bring about a technological singularity an event where the world of superintelligence begins to rapidly accelerate an advancement beyond our comprehension. The last two branches, transfiguration and uploading, are very radical. They both agree with the idea of life extension, but will use advanced technology to do it. Uploading is the idea that we can scan a human brain and then transfer it into another host, likely an advanced computer. Transfiguration is the same idea, except uploading will be accomplished by means of nanobots in our bloodstreams or implanted in our brains. These bots would then rewire and or augment our brains and nervous systems to make us the super people imagined in many of these other branches. Okay, that may seem like a lot right now, but bear with me. I'm going to try and break it down into some bite-sized chunks because this is such an expansive topic. There's a lot to go over. Where did transhumanism come from and how is it changing? The first significant recorded use of the term transhumanism was by evolutionary biologist Julian Huxley in 1957, but the branch of philosophy has existed for several hundred years. Philosophers have long envisioned humanity being radically different through the use of technology, and transhumanism is simply a continuation of that idea. The term was first popularized in 1978 by futurist and computer scientist FM2030. Yes, he really changed his name to that. And again in 1989 by Max Moore. But the basic philosophical idea is much older. More recently, the term has become popular again through the works of people like Nick Bostrom, David Pierce, and Ray Kurzweil, all notable names in the field of transhumanism. Why are people becoming more interested now? Well, people are becoming more interested in transhumanism for several reasons. One reason is that medical technology is improving at an exponential rate. We are already seeing the implications of this with life extension, super senses, uploading, and more. But it's just getting started. Someone born in 1990 can expect to live about 73 years if they are a man, or 79 if they are a woman. By 2030, life expectancy is expected to increase by 10 years and by 2050 it is predicted that life expectancy will nearly double. And as medical technology improves, we can expect the same kind of advancements we've seen over the last few decades, only multiplied exponentially. Another reason people are becoming more interested in transhumanism is because of the technological singularity. This is the idea that at some point, technology will begin to improve so rapidly and unpredictably that it becomes impossible to understand. At this point, we may be living in a world where computers are smarter than us and can improve themselves even faster, making it progressively more difficult for us to keep up. The implications of such an event could be anything, but many people fear that we could end up like the replicants in Blade Runner, or worse. The last reason that people are becoming more interested in transhumanism is because of our increasing understanding of neuroscience and consciousness. We now know that every thought and action originates as an electrical impulse within your brain, but we still don't fully understand how it works. As our understanding grows, so will our ability to control and manipulate the brain through technology, which could have even more significant implications than any other branch of transhumanism. Why are people worried about transhumanism? 
Is it a bad thing? Look, I know this is getting long, but it's important to understand that transhumanism is not a single thing. There are branches of the philosophy, and there's a lot of debate within each branch about what will happen, if it should happen, how it should happen, etc. So to answer this question, I'm going to have to break down some major branches in the transhumanist movement. Biological transhumanism is the branch of transhumanism that is most commonly found in science fiction. The idea here is to use technology to enhance or merge with your existing biology, internal transplants, genetic modification, etc. This kind of thing has been seen in films like Limitless and Lucy, as well as novels like Altered Carbon, The Diamond Age, and The Culture series, just to name a few. Mind uploading transhumanism is the branch of transhumanism that suggests that instead of making dramatic changes to your biology, you instead upload your consciousness into a computer or robot body. This could give you a much longer lifespan, as well as enhanced abilities to process information and store memories. It could also allow you to travel interstellar distances in a relatively short time. However, it might not be the same as being alive, because your consciousness would have no physical form or sensory input. The idea of uploading was popularized by people like Ray Kurzweil, but it appears in Ghost in the Shell and the Matrix series as well. Superhuman transhumanism is simply when we enhance our own biology with technology to give ourselves capabilities beyond what would normally be possible for a human. This includes things like advanced strength, speed, senses, and endurance. It could also include things like enhanced intelligence, emotional control, and memory. This technology has already been achieved to a degree through contact sports, military equipment, and medicine. But for the most part, these are only available to those who can afford it. Technological transhumanism is where we merge with machines that aren't necessarily organic in nature. Cybernetics is a big part of this, but nanotechnology and smart devices are also a big factor in the future. The idea here is that we'll be able to use technology in place of biology for most things, including reproduction and food production and distribution. You can call it a sort of cybernetic communism. This is where we start to see some radical ideas, like the abolition of work, death, and disease. The most popular example of this branch of transhumanism is probably Star Trek, but it also appears in Deus Ex and Alistair Reynolds' Revelation space series. Superpower transhumanism is in the same ways very similar to superhuman transhumanism, in the sense that it's where we enhance our current biology. But in this case, instead of enhanced abilities, we get one or more extraordinary powers, like telekinesis, telepathy, and teleportation. This branch of transhumanism is not as common in science fiction, but there are a few notable examples, like Greg Egan's Distress or the novel The Quantum Thief. What these branches all have in common is that they're based on some form of post-humanism, where we create beings with capabilities beyond what humans are capable of. Essentially, if you were to understand transhumanism, all you would have to do is replace the word God with post-humans. It's about our desire to become something more than what we are. But there is another side of transhumanism, one which opposes technological transhumanism and goes by the name of Bio-Luddism. Bio-Luddism is a philosophy which believes that certain technological advancements should not be made because they represent the destruction of our current state of being. It's an anti-transhumanist branch of transhumanism. They both seek to achieve the same goal, but one is a radicalized version of the other, and they go about achieving this goal in very different ways. The main example of bioletism in science fiction is probably Huxley's Brave New World, which warns us against making technological advancements that could destroy our culture. There are also other books and movies like Mother of Storms or The Children of Men, which depict worlds where technology has created an opposite effect to what was intended. In the case of these stories, it's because they created a sense of isolation and loneliness. The most common thing you'll see is authors writing about both bioludism and transhumanism as if they're just as valid as the other, which I think misses the point of what makes transhumanism so interesting. In my mind, it's about the contrast between these two philosophies. It's about how human beings are capable of achieving the most amazing things, but only if they're brave enough to let go of their humanity and accept change in order to survive and thrive. This is why I'm starting to think that even though transhumanism has been around for a long time, 
It's really only recently that we've begun to understand exactly what it means. It's not about technology. It's about our ability to create, change, and adapt. So I'll leave you with these questions. What do you believe are the risks and benefits of becoming post-human? So please, share your thoughts below and let's have a dialogue. But before you go, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Thank you all, and remember, keep looking forward. Keep looking forward.